Hi, welcome to Bootstrap Algebra, lesson 10, restating the problem. Make sure that you are set up so you should have WeScheme logged in. So we're ready to do some programming in WeScheme. And uh, let's uh, open the uh, teacher's page. So you should do this um, for every lesson also. Follow along right here at the beginning where I always navigate to the teacher's page because that's where the links are to all of the um, handouts and those kinds of things. So Bootstrap Algebra or bootstrapworld.org Courses Algebra and the latest version is Fall 2020. And we are, let's see, let's remember what, let's uh, go back over what we did before, uh, last time. So solving word problems. We took our um, design recipe. We added something called a purpose statement. And we use that to start solving word problems. Do we have any new vocabulary? Purpose statement was the main thing. We're still talking about functions, so we're still talking about domains and ranges. We now know all about data types. We know what the contract is of our design recipe. And so we had uh, that really cool starter file for the rocket. Um, and uh, they had a broken uh, program with rocket and uh, no matter how many times we push the the uh, space bar to advance the time counter of the world the rocket never moved and um, we used our design recipe to change the uh, rocket examples so that when we uh, when the time in the world ticks that the rocket goes up so hopefully you were able to do some of the homework and do some of the cool changes to uh, the rocket to make it go faster or to sink down or do some of these other um, things that we suggested last time. If you didn't, you can actually do that today. Um, stop if you want to and play some more with the, um, the, the rocket starter. But as we move forward, today we're going to look a little bit more at word problems restating the problem. So let's see what they mean by that. So um, if, to, for people who have uh, an easy time with word problems in algebra, this may seem like it's taking things too slowly or that we're breaking things down too much. Um, but as problems get harder, this process becomes more important. And for people who um, have a harder time uh, understanding word problems or, or being able to translate those word problems into some kind of um, actions that you can do to, to help solve it, um, these things really help. So um, we'll talk about these um, you know, kind of abstractly first, and then we'll look at a lot of examples today. And um, I tell people this all the time, when you have to um, read something that is too hard, sometimes you might have to read it multiple times. That's what hard means, is you can't understand it necessarily the first time. There's nothing wrong with reading it multiple times. Sometimes you can't understand something until you actually um, have read it at least once to kind of know what you're reading. So um, try to read things multiple times. It helps to have, uh, in, in reading anything hard, it helps to have a question that you're answering. And this three read strategies gives us exactly that. Um, so the first read is, what is this problem about? So we'll read through the problem and then try to discover, just try to answer that question in the first read. What's this problem about? We don't get bogged down in distances or numbers or all of the other crazy things they throw into school word problems. Um, we're just trying to say, what is this about? All right, then on our next, and then we'll, we will have a place to write that down. And then on the next read, we'll say, what are the quantities involved? So then we can look and just, just look for the quantities. We're still not trying to solve the problem. We're just seeing, are these miles? Are these, um, is this money? 
what, you know, are there a number of people? What is this at the quantities that are involved? And then we'll, we'll write a purpose statement. And we'll talk about what is a good purpose statement. So the third read, we'll try to actually pull those things together to see what our purpose statement is. Then we can go through what we have on that purpose statement and then start beginning to um, write our understanding of the problem. Drawing is a frequent technique that we use um, in math and computer science to try to, to submit our understanding, to try to so we can see the relationships. There's just some things that we can't see in words that become clear when we draw. So definitely draw um, on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper. Um, Sometimes we have to meet with other people, get input from other people to see what the um, uh, to see uh, to, to to clarify our understanding of the problem. It helps us to have other people that we can explain things to, that can ask questions, that we can ask questions, and then we can do another draft of our word problem or of our um, of our. Uh, um, purpose statement to demonstrate that we do understand the problem. So we'll look at some toy examples today. We won't have to go through all of these steps, but just remember that um, well, we'll try to go through them, but they're, we won't have long meetings about about these these simple problems, but that you can apply these techniques to any word problem that you have. Um, so um, when you get stuck on a word problem, Follow these steps uh, before you give up uh, or before you try to um, you know, come to a final answer. So let's look at page 28. And this is just a page where they have um, written out those things we just talked about. So when we approach a word problem in, in a few, few minutes, um, these are just places to write those out. First read, second read, third read, purpose statement, first revision, purpose statement, second, second revision. So um, if, you, if you like working on the paper, definitely print this out. You can write it down. You can put it in another document. I like, as I said before, just to put everything into we scheme. So I'm going to start a new program. I'm going to call it um, Restating the Problem. And then if you do put kind of notes, uh, you know, in, in We Scheme, I'm going to pull my interactions over a little bit so I've got more places to write. And then remember, if you do, you can put... Um, semicolons to give yourself a little place to write and I'm just gonna and just out of habit we haven't talked about this yet but I'll put my name and then the date it's a lot of 20s in that and then I copied that and so I'm just going to make myself a little place to put all of these things. To remind myself as we go through. And you can do that. You can of course do it right on the page if you want to. So we're going to do lots of examples today. All right, you can um, stop real quickly and talk to your partner about um, the design recipe and what steps you are most confident about and what steps you're the least confident about. So stop really quickly and um, talk about that. Okay. Now, um, in these slides, um, and then also on um, the lesson, the teacher's page on the lesson, um, there's this game that you can play if you have several people in your um, uh, class. 
um, there's a couple of games. Um, I think for us uh, uh, doing video, um, the best thing to do will just be to work through um, several different uh, problems. So I'm going to get past the game. And we're going to talk about the marquee example. Okay, so first, open the first practice, number one. So that's where our, that's where our uh, task is going to be. And then um, I'm going to tell you to, to pause and you work through one and then I'll work through one. And we'll do several examples like that. So um, open the, the page that has the marquee question on it. And then wherever you're writing down your different reads, go ahead and um, do those these five things. First read, second read, third read, do these tasks. And then um, the first revision and second revision of your um, problem statement. In fact, let's go back and see what is our goals on the first revision and the second revision. All right, we don't have any specific goals. We just want to um, you know, refine our drafts, so that's okay. I do like the where you get that strategy, so we'll talk about that. Okay, so now go ahead, pause the video. You work through those steps that are in that other um, page of what you're looking for. First read, second read, third read, purpose statement, um, revision, second revision on the marquee problem. So go ahead and pause now. Welcome back. Now I am going to work through the marquee problem. All right, first read. So, and this is obviously a very short, very simple. Um, we just want to work through these steps so that we have the tools ready when we have uh, more difficult problems. So, write a function marquee that takes in a message and returns um, that message in large gold letters. So, not much of a word problem. That was my first read. What is this problem about? So I'm going to make a copy here of these things. What is this problem about? And I read it through and it was about printing a message. Now, one thing we might look and say, write a function marquee. Why did they tell us that? This may not be a word that you know. So any words that are in the problem that you don't know, feel free to look up. And again, for um, simple problems, that might not be the case. For school problems, um, the people who wrote the book might think that they're using words that everybody knows. But depending on how long it's been um, since the book was written, the cultural context of the people who wrote the book, the cultural context you're in, you might not know all these words. So if you see a word you, you don't know, why did they use the word marquee? Marquee can it be projecting over the entrance to a theater, sign, hotel, or a building? Okay, what about... Uh, okay, so marquee is these big signs on in front of a building. I guess maybe it's a French word that kind of looks French. Okay, 
So that makes more sense with what this says uh, we're going to do. Returns the message in large good letters. And then I even said, I don't think it, re don't matter. it doesn't matter what it returns. We don't know much about returning things. We know about printing a message, right? And we've done this a bunch of times with, with, with the text uh, command where we've, you know, you printed your name in big, big letters. So, uh, all right, second read, what are the quantities? Write a function marquee that takes in a message and returns that message in large gold red letters. So there's a message and a message, that message. So there's one. There's one message is the quantities. Third read. Write a function marquee that takes in a message and returns that message in large gold letters. So they, uh, the, this, this curriculum has been using a word that I liked, um, consume, instead of take in. So um, consume a message. And let's uh, yeah, consume a message. Print the message in large gold letters. Okay. All right. That's a pretty good one. And and like I said, this is a simple example. So you might not have had much revision between your um, initial draft here in the third to the third read and your first revision and second revision. Um, and I like to put it, you know, really not in a sentence here, but then for a real purpose statement, I like to say something like, uh, because this is going to be a purpose statement for a function, right? This function consumes a message and prints the message in large gold letters. I can't think of anything for the for another revision, so let's save that for later. Um, now let's see. They actually wanted us to go through, and hopefully you did, um, with the next thing. And um, the next part of our design recipe is the contract. So now we know enough about the contract to give it a function name, domain, and range. So this is going to be, um, I think we can call it marquee. And um, it consumes a data type, of, or it consumes a message. And we only know about one kind of data type we could use for that, which is string. And this, all right, now I do have a question, so maybe I do have something for the third revision. Returns that message in large gold letters. And you'll find this, you know, no matter how simple things are or how good the people are who are writing things, to me this is ambiguous. Um, you know, we could write a function that actually does return a string, but the fact that this says large gold letters... Um, means it's, it's an image, right? It has to be an image. So image. Now that does give me an idea for the third, for another purpose statement, which is this function consumes a message and returns an image of that message in large gold letters. So, so going through the uh, design recipes helped me, um, you know, understand that. And now, let's see, purpose is next. So now I've got a good copy of that from my working document. And let's see. Oh, they don't use, they don't put the word purpose. They just say, let's start it like this. So there's a purpose statement. We get to do our examples. 
which I like to get over here and start doing some stuff. So I know how to write stuff with text. So I, oh, let's see, no, it's the text function. And I believe that takes letters and a size. I always get mixed up on that. 50 and I know green works. So let's try that. All right, that works. All right, so that was the correct thing. Um, Alt up. I hope gold is a color. It is. Would you count that as large? I would not count that as large. Let's say 500. Oh. Uh, 255 is the biggest text we can get. So that must be the largest. All right. Good. All right. So that is a good... Um, right hand side of our example so example function name input oh yeah okay all right so let's see um and so now we know what big means we know what gold means now we just let me just say um, my message my, we saw Marquise on the movie theater. Okay, so look at these two examples. I'm going to do alt up arrow. See? All right, so 255 stay the same, gold stayed the same. Um, high changed. So as we do our examples over here, I also like to put a bunch of carriage returns at the bottom of my thing so that I'm just hitting enter a bunch of times so I can scroll the text up. So um, example. And my function is going to be called marquee. And the thing that's changing is the text. I can't use the word text there. Well, it could, but that may be confusing because text is also the function name. So we can call it, how about message? And then that should print out. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. We're doing examples. I went jump too far. Um, so if I put in, let's do these examples. Hi. Hi. Then. I should get this exact message, right? And even one more. And example, marquee, if I put by, then I should get this with, oops. Hi. Right, so we got two examples. Um, this is how we're going to use the function, and this is what we expect to get out is this image. So that makes it much easier. I was jumping the gun earlier to write the definition. Define marquee, and then here's where I want to say, okay, what do I want to name this variable? Let's name it tech um, message. And then I'm going to come down a line, I'm going to copy one of my examples, and instead of the word by hard coded, we call it, I'll put in the variable. I'm going to save everything, which actually reloaded my, my screen, so I don't have anything over here, which means that the example um, worked correctly, right? If you remember, um, uh, when we save, it, it actually runs everything, and I'm going to put in a, a, you know, something that doesn't match, and hit save. Oh, I was wrong. It doesn't uh, save. It doesn't run it until we run it. And now we've got a failure. I'm going to do it again. Run. And now we have nothing. So when you save it, it doesn't run it. But when you run it, if you don't have any errors and examples, then they run fine. So that was the first example of using um, this technique of uh, the, the reads and revisions for a word problem. If you didn't do um, circle area, 
then pause now and do that. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead and pause and, and do circle area. If you haven't done it, if you have done it, um, I will be back in a second. Okay, so hopefully you took a cut at um, doing this word problem for circle area. I'm going to do it. I'll go a little faster than I did last time since we're more experienced with that. I'm going to just copy my, well, I'll do circle area right here at the top. So let's do circle area. Okay, first read. Write a function circle area that takes in a radius and returns the area of a circle. Well, it seems like this problem is about getting the area of a circle. And I'm going to call this one. And second read, two, what are the quantities involved? A radius and an area. Right? We're not doing too much yet. Don't, it doesn't matter that if I don't remember what the area of a circle is at this stage. All I'm looking for is things that words that mean quantities. And if you're uh, if you've had algebra, then um, hopefully these words are um, familiar to you, or you recognize them as quantities. So radius and area. Uh, what are the quantities? Radius and area. All right. Third read. What is a good purpose statement? Consume a radius and return an area. Consume a radius and return an area. All right. First revision. Clean it up a little bit. This function consumes a radius and returns. Uh, okay, you know, I, uh, I think a good revision would be to, to, to really narrow down a radius. The radius of a circle and returns the area of that circle. Again, I don't have a second one yet. I might need to think about it more. I might need to talk to somebody. Um, so I'm going to go on with the contract. They told us what they wanted us to name it, um, but that's going to be, that's really good. Uh, uh, part of the design recipe is just doing the name lets us focus in on what this, this what we've been talking about um, to, to give a good name for what we're really trying to do. They gave us the name, so we'll do, we'll do circle area. Area. And that's going to consume a radius, which we only know a few different data types, and we think our radius is probably going to be a number. And returns an area, that's also going to be a number, right? Okay. All right. Well, I don't have any revisions, I don't think, so let's just use this as our purpose statement. Let me give some more space there. Um, examples. All right. Let's head over to our interactions. If you, for, for area of a circle, you probably remember um, what the formula is, but if you don't, that's fine. Just, oh, I was going to do a different window for that. And if you remember, the area equals the pi is pi times r squared. So uh, I wonder how pi works in we scheme. I'm just going to type in pi. Cool. So pi is already defined just like the number 1, 2, 3.4, 
right? So pi already has a representation. I'm going to click on it. Uh, I don't get any kind of fraction, right? So it's already got a decimal representation in here. So that's something we can use. So pi times the radius squared. So if I had a circle, so if I, if I turn this to a design recipe, remember in algebra, if there's um, two variables next to each other, or in this case, this pi, which we're going to call pi, is a constant next to a variable name, then it's times, so times pi r, so let's take a radius, a circle of radius 4 squared. What is squared? All right, let's back up a little bit. Is there a square? S Q U A R D S Q R. Ah, function square. Um, let's see. If we had a four, we'd expect a sixteen, right? So S Q R four. Yep. Okay. So now we know how to do this with circles of evaluation. So I'm going to say put that back like I had it. Multiply pi times square four. And that'll give me the area of a circle whose radius is 5. I'm going to do Alt up and let's do 5. And um, for these formulas, I'm going to say that they're right. You know, again, if you if there's some other look, let's do, let me. This was you know we we actually have a different calculator here, so we can look it up. Uh, let's do 4, and we want 50.2 something, or 50.3, 50.27, 50.265, rounds to that. Let's do 5, 78.54. Looks good, right? So we, we, our functions are, are given the right answer. So we've got these two examples. So now we can write the example part of our... Um, function. So we'll say example and we'll say circle area of 4 is this. And then I'll just copy everything. Paste circle area of 5 was this now now as you know remember pi is irrational so when we when we multiply an irrational number we also get an irrational so these are approximations you know of a much of, of, an, of an infinitely long number represented a decimal so we can't actually put uh, you know instead of this formula here this calculation here we can't actually put this 50 point whatever using uh, this ex this part of example there is a, a different kind of example in the documentation where you can say um, you know how close it can be but this example here is exact so this is going to expect it to be an exact number and um, uh, since we're using the same computer to do this it will compare it as long as it needs to but we probably can't just type in this exact number and have it match correctly so let's just uh, use the the, the um, function here instead of that all right so now we know enough to write our uh, definition so we'll define and then I just like to copy and paste to avoid typos all right except I'm not going to put the number four what changes here let's say I'm gonna put an enter just to and I put misspell define. What changes is the radius, and we could call it radius, but um, sometimes it's super easy in defining functions to call it what all the math people do, and let's just call it r. All right, so that's going to be r, and then I can also copy from here, paste that in. Let this thing tell me if I got the right parentheses. I did. All right, and where does R go in this? R goes right here. That's my definition. I feel good about it. I can save. I can run. Good. I don't have any other, um, you know, I didn't have another revision to this simple function. So we will do one 
more example um, that's a little more word problem-ish. Um, and then uh, your homework will be just some more examples of working through this design rest or this this now you know refining your purpose statement um, using these steps so uh, we did this one so we did number one I'm gonna do number two your homework is to do three and four so you're gonna do page 32 and page 33 um, if your numbers are different in your book, it actually doesn't matter when you find this design recipe practice into word problems. Pick two pages. Um, I will pick. Actually, yeah, okay. All right. Write a function minimum wage. That, oops, let me get set up. Right. Write a function minimum wage that takes in the number of hours worked and returns the amount a worker would get. Actually, I wanted to do one. Oh, no, this. Uh, unless I want to do a harder one, but once we do this recipe, they're all they all end up being the same. Um, write a function minimum wage that takes in the number of hours worked and returns the amount a worker would get paid at 10.25 an hour. So let's, um, what's this about? It's about how much a worker gets paid. What are the quantities? Write a function minimum wage that takes in a number of hours worked and returns the amount a worker will get paid. All right, so let's call that, we took in hours worked and um, the other quantity was amount of pay, All right? All right, so we can say something like as a first cut of consume hours worked and return amount of pay so good first cut don't want to think about it too much you really want to get just get it out don't 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 try to make it fancy take you're essentially stating right the um, uh, domain in the range all right, and then now I like to have just a little, this little boilerplate that I've been doing, which is this function consumes the hours worked and returns the amount of pay. All right, I think that's a good place now. Um, I understand what all those words mean. I um, think it's clear. So uh, I won't do another revision right now, but as we work through, I might have to do another revision. All right, so the first thing we need to do is our contract. And um, did they tell us exactly what to name it? They did. Men mom wage. And that's going to consume it was only one quantity right it just just hours so that's a number and it's going to put out another number which is the pay okay and I think this purpose statement is fine for right now don't have another revision yet all right now we can start some examples let's see remember some things we learned about word problems we've learned um, in school about word problems that this slash means per right so if this is if we say it out loud it's 1025 per hour 
should have said that when I was reading it. I'm not sure if I did. So 1025 per hour. Let's think about what that means. It means per hour worked for each hour. So um, let's see. How much would the person get paid if they worked for one hour? Well, if they get paid 1025 per hour, that means they would get one, they would get 1025, right? So they would get times 1025, one, 1025, right? All right, let's go back here. Let's find another super simple example. What if they worked two hours? Well, if I get paid 1025 for the first hour and 1025 for the second hour, I can do that in my head. That's twenty dollars and fifty cents. So times 1025, two hours, twenty dollars and fifty cents. Okay. Uh, is there another super simple one I can do? Uh, Ten hours. So the person, let's say, uh, they had. They worked two different days and had five-hour shifts on both days, or they worked a really, really long day, right? Um, and they worked 10 hours. I know that um, I can just move the decimal point, and so instead of paying $10, I, they, they, in 10 hours, they would earn $102.5, right? So let's do that times 10.25. 10 hours, 102.5. Okay, I think I understand now how the per hour works. And um, these are good examples. So example and minimum. All right, and, and to tell you the truth, what I really do is once I type something out and know I have it spelled right, I copy and I use that everywhere I can because typos are a big pain in programming, and um, I make mistakes typing, so I copy and paste a lot. So minimum wage, and we said if it was one, and in this case, these are exact numbers, so you can either type in the calculator here, or you can just type in 1025. Sometimes that's clearer. Eh, uh, yeah, yeah, it just depends. Um, since since I've got this here, I'm you know I can copy and paste from there. Um, one thing that that will make it easier to use your define is if you type in the calculator part. So we will do it that way, and then I know I have three examples, two and three, and I know I changed this to two, changed this to ten. And I changed this to two. I'm just looking back at my example. And this to 10. All right, now I have enough to do my define. So I can say define. And I know I, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to hit enter. All right, and let's see. Um, consumes the hours worked. So let's call this repeated quantity here hours. And then I'm going to take one of my right hand sides, paste it right here, and I'm going to use that hours variable or hours argument as a variable here. All right. Let's save that. Let's run it, which will run the examples. I do, since I don't get any output from a good example, I do every once in a while just change it to make sure that I'm, uh, you know, that my examples do work. Okay, so that gives me confidence that if I put in a bad example, it does work. So let's put that back to one, run it again. No output, that's good, save. So, and I didn't feel like I needed to, to change my purpose statement again. Um, that was a pretty straightforward one. So, your job now is with those examples, and you can go back and watch more of those examples, um, but your, your task for next time is to do um, the examples on page 3 and page 5 or any two different pages. So, I think there's two per page. So there will be four examples for you to work through. Um, 
re revising your purpose statement, go through all of those steps with the purpose statement, just like I did, either on your piece of paper or right in the code, and then take your, you know, go through the design recipe, including your revised purpose statement and examples so that you can uh, have more practice uh, applying the design recipe to these word problems.